デンジ君はこれから私に変われることになります返事はハイカワンだけいいえなんていう犬はいらない Yes, mistress. Can't understand what this guy's looking concerned about. Welcome back, Devil Hunters. When we last spoke, Denji here had just been picked up off the streets as a stray by this lady here with perforating yellow eyes. Her name's Makima, and she works for the public safety office leading teams of Devil Hunters protecting the city. Denji, never having been treated kindly by anyone before outside of the freakish animal that now constitutes his beating heart, is in love with her. Or at least he's pretty sure he is. It's a roller coaster emotionally, the literal. First sentence she speaks to him. Every first word a tenderness, every second a threat. It's easy to recognize that she's not quite normal in the way she handles her business, but it's tough to blame Denji for not noticing. He is as close to lethal failing to thrive due to lack of human affection as one can be given his actual level of functionality. One minute the girl's telling him he'll be shot like a convict escaping prison if he tries to run, the very next she's letting you pick any item off the Burger King dollar menu you want. Mommy's buying. Speaking of letting him keel over from blood. Loss onto her breasts, they took out one extra scene from the manga here that just emphasizes further the rapid back and forth admiration and fear Denji experiences every time he interacts with Makima. Which I think is a shame because cutting it does feel like it reduces that impact a little, since there's more of Denji falling over her at this point than not. But not a huge deal. I won't show it just in case they throw it in later somehow, but it also gives us more emotion about Pochita and how special he is for caring about Denji. Skipping straight to Makima telling Denji that his condition is basically unheard of, but that she Believes his story because she can smell the devil inside him about halfway. And while feeding him his udon like the good boy he is, Denji asks about as smoothly as humanly possible if Makima likes a certain kind of guy. To which Makima replies, she likes people like Denji, to his surprise. Oh my god, dude, do you think this means she'll hold my hand or, or, or let me carry her around like a horse? I think that's what couples do. Meet Aki Hayakawa. He heads the special devil hunter unit that Denji's going to be a part of. And like a demon reigning in an escapee sinner back to Hades, he's bringing Denji to his own personal head. Hell, where there's no female girls to sniff for miles. Foiled again, at least for now. Aki's got a unique way of making friends. It's just how he says hello. He punches you in the face, spits on you, and tells you to fuck off if you're just in this line of work to get laid. He's not really down for watching more co-workers kick the bucket for stupid reasons, so call him a nice guy without much patience maybe. He's forgotten one thing though. Denji is a shonen manga protagonist, so it's time for him to unleash his special move. Ball decimator maximum output. I'm placing this in the top three anime battles of all time, right after that one time Luffy learned penis lasso. Funny how he speaks with the resolve of a shonen hero chasing his dreams, but his dreams are kissing a girl, any girl really, and eating food off a plate instead of from the trash. Despite all that, Denji is going to work with Aki. In fact, Denji is going to be living in Aki's house, which I'm almost certain Aki did not consent to in his employee agreement. At least he's allowed to murder Denji if he tries to get a different job. Slightly important, Aki tells Denji that Makima saved his life, probably around the same time that Aki tells us about later where his entire family was killed by devils. Starting to feel bad for this man. Anyway, Denji's having a fan-fucking-tastic time living it up at Aki's place, making a fucking mess, not flushing after taking some big beautiful shits. So this is what plumbing is like. Pretty neato. Now then, this funny little guy with a buggy face is what we call a fiend, a human corpse now fully possessed by a devil, their personality now encapsulated by a human form. This is explicitly distinct from Denji because one, Denji is still predominantly human in his mind it seems, and two, because if he were the chainsaw fiend, he'd have a chainsaw blade perpetually sticking out of his skull because fiends aren't good at hiding at least one demonic feature in the head region. Denji casually locks the pincer fiend's head off, saying that he feels sympathy for the fiend, because Denji easily could have been like him, and frankly, his experiences with devils have been unprecedentedly pleasant considering the misfortune they've caused others. Aki tells Denji he needs to take this more seriously. Everybody working on these projects has something they're fighting to protect or dreams they're pursuing, and there's no time to fuck around when it comes to devil hunting, because it can get a lot harder than some dipshit eating a parrot. Denji, being that dumb-witted protagonist he needs to be to stay atop the shonen jump charts, sticks to his guns and tells Aki that he'd make friends with the devil if he was able to. And Aki doesn't like that, but he's gonna need to get over it eventually. The guy's got a dog for a heart. What a sweet moment for Denji. And he was actually trying to keep the blood off the porno mags. I like to think it's somewhere between the two, but mission accomplished. Devil killed. Erotica safely contained. Everybody pack up, we've made our families proud. But you know, maybe Aki's right. Maybe Denji really could use some more solidifying with his goals. But now that he's here, he's gotten more than he ever imagined. What does a man who has everything even aim to do? Well, thinking on it, he still hasn't gotten much in the way of bitches. Maybe a little too greedy to aim for sex. How about, yes, I've got it, touching boobs. That's it, that's the hero's journey. You know, if this was any other series, this obsession with women and fondling somebody would be unoriginal and cringy. But in Chainsaw Man, Denji is so out of touch and innocent, 
He takes this seriously. He might not even be capable of coming up with a more meaningful idea. A couple days ago, nothing mattered at all in his life. This is what it means to reframe a shitty trope, giving it to a character with a lot more likability and depth to him, and using it to show off his humor and flaws, his stunted sexuality and naivety. But fuck all that stupid nerd shit. I know we just killed one of these and had a real talk about how devils can never really be our friends, so now's the perfect time for one to become a main character and core member of the squad. Power. That's right, fiends can be devil hunters if their intelligence is intact enough, and power is is what we'd call a real big brain. How do we know we can trust her? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Processing, yes. I think she's a girl with boobs and everything. Okay, we're good, welcome aboard. She's kind of a spaz though. I can appreciate how they depict her running around like an idiot searching for something to kill here, especially when she smacks Denji across the head to get his attention. But there's something special about the way the manga portrays just how much she can't sit still and how loud she very constantly speaks. And this is just a personal disappointment for me, but when she's introduced in the manga, she does an arm twirl and flex, a literal wind up for her power move, her sentai stance. We only see the second half of that. The arm stretching, her actual first pose of the comic, is animated but almost entirely off screen. I want to see her full pose map, but get it together! I'm so mad I could assault a police officer. But I don't have to because if you just show off your own shiny badge, they basically can't touch you. Time to commit crimes. Or wait, where is power going? What the fuck? It's the dreaded sea cucumber devil. No one across the globe for committing atrocities such as poking you with its many fingers. You can tell it's evil because of the skull. Power takes taking her job very seriously, brings the hammer of justice down and proceeds to do the exact opposite of Makima's recommendation to stay low-key in public by screaming about her victory. <laughs> Yeah. You're looking at the number one winner of the manga's popularity poll. I do think you'd be hard pressed to find a voice more perfect for her though. It's gotta be precisely what I would have imagined for her. And I'm glad they pulled off that hammer scene so well in animation. It's impressive how well the manga portrays motion, and I'm glad to see that quality in motion as it deserves, without a drop off in quality for episode 2. Keep that budget spread nicely, but it's certainly looking like they had a fat one to play with thankfully. Aki's voice is nice too by the way, I don't expect a crazy over the top performance for one of the series bravest characters. It's definitely on point. Oh, and here's a new outro. They're giving us a new one every episode. I feel spoiled. Outro review. I missed the first one until later, but it's literally an AMV, so not all that memorable. Song's fine. This one, however, is adorable, with its sketchier line work, soft colors, but still amazing lighting. You know, Zuto Mayo, the group who performs this cute, funky, energetic song, is apparently so secretive, nobody knows who the members are publicly. Weird. Feels fitting for a world as mysterious as Chainsaw Man's. I wonder how Denji will manage with his new partner. Not not quite the girl he was expecting to spend his days with. Well, our job has only just begun. There are many devils still yet to be exercised. I'll see you next week in the public safety office. The impossible